Hey guys, I'm very excited to be back. I'm going to be digging into Titania today. Titania from A Midsummer Night's Dream. I'm going to look at two monologues in these uh, videos today. So I'm going to link below the different monologues in case you want to check out some different ones. And I'll do a character analysis for you as well. So you can just get a bit of an insight over Titania's character generally and things you need to think about. So, <clears throat> set your heart at rest, the fairyland buys not for the child of me, is the second monologue in her kind of two monologues that are quite close together. And what's happening in this situation, just to give you some context before we dive into what she's actually talking about, to give you some context in this situation, she's talking to Oberon. Oberon and Titania have been arguing and she's just explained just before in the monologue before about how that's causing problems with um, the seasons are all kind of going upside down and the mortals are getting affected by their arguing. And Oberon brings up this child. He says, uh, basically when she says it's our fault that all these things are happening because we've been arguing and he's like, he's like well, fix it then. All I'm asking is that you give me that changeling boy to be my henchman. <laughs> Great, yeah, sure, I'm gonna hand over that child to be your henchman. Um, and she goes now into this monologue explaining why she's not gonna give up this boy. It's a really interesting situation because the changeling boy is kind of the crux of why everything in this monologue happens. I mean, not in this monologue, in this whole play happens because Oberon and Titania are arguing and in this sort of sequence, in this scene, everything gets like massively overblown and Titania gets upset and Oberon's upset and Oberon plays the whole trick on her of her falling into it um, in love with a donkey and all that kind of thing because she won't give up this changeling boy and yet we never see the changeling boy and we don't really um, or some, sometimes in productions they bring the changeling boy on stage but often we don't see the boy, we don't really get any context apart from this monologue. So this monologue is actually quite significant even though it's short. It's a personal story. There's lots of opportunities to dig into the emotional connection and what's really going on for Titania and lots of different ways to, to play it. I'll look at those um, different interpretations of, ca of character in the character analysis video. So for now I'm going to dig into what she's talking about and we can throw around some acting choices and see what works for you. So she starts with set your heart at rest. The fairy land buys not the child of me. Now, notably set your heart at rest is a half line. It follows Oberon's quick, um, I do but beg a little changeling boy to be my henchman. Immediately set your heart at rest. A half line always shows that it comes in really fast. So that means when you start this monologue, you're starting with attack. Now, you might decide that attack is because she's angry that he even brought it up. It might be just that she is trying to be very clear, so she's shutting it down, and she's trying to be calm, whatever it is, but it's very personal, so you can decide how to play that, um, that level of attack. And set your heart at rest just means don't even worry about it, just <laughs> stop right there. The fairy land buys not the child of me, meaning I'm not going to give it up. And now she goes on to explain. So this is kind of a new beat in itself. I'm going to explain to you. His mother was a votress of my order and in the spiced Indian air by night, full of, often hath she gossiped by my side. So his mother, so the mother of the child was a votress of her order being like a, um, kind of like a helping lady, part of her entourage. And, uh, but she was a mortal, which we don't see. We don't see that example in the play, really. We don't see, um, we only see fairies waiting on Titania. So at some point she had mortals as well, who used to like wait on her and be, be her little helper and her friend. Um, and so in the spice of Indian air, they refer to India a lot and it's just supposed to be like some exotic place. Um, by night, full often, often hath she gossiped by my side. So basically we used to hang out and gossip in these exotic places because Titania can travel all over the world, you know, super fast is the idea of the fairies. They can kind of go, go wherever they like when they please. And sat with me on Neptune's yellow sands, marking the embarked traders on the flood. So again, sitting, um, now I don't know whether she literally means on Neptune or if there's another place called Neptune, but again, just some exotic place, yellow sands, we're sitting on the beach now, marking the embarker trader, traders on the flood. So looking at the marking always means looking at. So they're watching the ships on 
the ocean. When we have laughed to see the sails conceive and grow big bellied with the wanton wind. So that's a beautiful um, image there. She's talking about the sails puffing up and looking like a pregnant belly. And so she's specifically referring to when uh, times when this lady was pregnant and they were watching the um, watching the sails puff up with wind and look like a pregnant belly. And so when she says the sail, watching marking the embark. Oh, sorry. And we have laughed to see the sails conceive uh, and grow big bellied with the wanton wind. She's talking literally can look look like they're literally conceiving. Which she, with pretty and with swimming gait, following her womb, then rich with my young squire. So with pretty and with swimming gait, meaning like she, la 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 la, um, would, uh, would imitate and sail upon the land to fetch me trifles. So she's sort of saying, we used to watch these boats and their sails puffing up like a pregnant belly. And then she would go and sort of sail off with her beautiful stride and floating gait and go and get me some snacks <laughs> and delightful jewels and things like that. Um, uh, her womb then rich with my young squire means that's when she was pregnant with the changeling boy. Um, would imitate blah, 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 so, to fetch me trifles and return again as from a voyage rich with merchandise so um, almost like she was a, a ship going off and coming back with riches from a far off land so all the stuff that you notice Titania Titania always talks in these kind of rich images and talking about things far away and the fairies do that a lot generally the Oberon as well and it's all and Puck always kind of referring to like things that are exotic and it, it, I would definitely make choices about your vocal quality and I'm going to talk about that a lot in the other video because it comes up a lot in the kind of descriptive language so again with descriptive language you really want to have a clear image in your head so now that I've sort of talked through there's a bit more to the monologue but thinking over the things I've just talked through you now need to as your homework in preparing for this performing this monologue think about how exactly you imagine that voters looking what did it look like on the sand you know where were they sitting were they sitting like in the water or high up on the beach what did the voters look like um, did she have a name for example and how pregnant was she when she was doing all this stuff have it all in your head so when you're talking about it it can affect you and can pull on you because importantly next bit but she being mortal of that boy did die so she's gone now this lady so you need to really connect to those memories because they would have been a beautiful time if you imagine a time when you were with a friend for example and you have those amazing memories of like oh, I remember we used to do this but that friend is now dead uh, <laughs> made me feel bad already so sorry but this is the kind of stuff that we do as actors obviously very safely accessing those emotions imagining that this person has died in childbirth and now you are looking after the son so she's become kind of um, god mother in this case and for her sake do I rear up the boy and for her sake I will not part with him so very very clear there obviously for her sake I'm bringing him up and for her sake and will not part with him it's basically like modern language we would pretty much say that except maybe less poetic so that's a sh it's a short one there but packed with feelings and packed with imagery it's a great pick if you need something for a kind of more stately um, descriptive character even if you're auditioning for Gertrude for example you could switch this one in as a as a good um, pick um, even Beatrice that kind of thing so let me know if you have any questions i'm going to stop it there because i'm going to do other videos and they'll be linked below again but if you did find this helpful please do like um, comment or subscribe because it really helps me bring these videos to more people and of course always comment if there is another monologue or character that you'd like me to look into see you in the next video bye